Have you got your duck call handy? Well, if you don't, hit the pause button and go grab yours real quick, because today we'll be doing some duck calling. I'm Joel Strickland, and this is Surviving Duck Season. Surviving Duck Season is presented by Mojo and High and Dry Waders. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Now, if you're new to the Surviving Duck Season channel, I've got a lot of great content, not just tips and tactics videos, uh, but also some really great duck and goose hunting, uh, some cooking videos, and even some DIY projects, so make sure you check that stuff out. Now, in today's video, we're going to be talking about getting back to the basics of duck calling. Uh, in the past, I've done a bunch of duck calling videos uh, that are mainly about techniques and some philosophies that I have on duck calling, but today we're gonna to do some basic things uh, that is geared mainly towards the beginner, but even if you've been calling for a long time, you'll probably still pick up some tips that'll help you to be a better duck caller. All right, so let's start off by talking about the different types of calls. Now, I'm not gonna to get too deep into all this because I've got another video that talks about choosing a duck call and all that kind of stuff. Now, while there are quite a few different types of calls out there, the two most popular are the Arkansas style call and the Louisiana style call. Um, I'm gonna show you really quickly the differences. An Arkansas style call right here, um, it's got a, a an insert that is basically one piece plus a reed and a cork or a wedge. Um, it's all kind of made together. And that is a J-frame call or an Arkansas style call. And they, and they also come in, in double reeds as well. And then this is a Louisiana style call. And basically the difference is the, uh, the insert, it's kind of all in different pieces, okay? So you've got your tone board and your wedge and everything kind of comes apart uh, with the reed there. And so that's kind of how that goes. Now, I honestly, um, you know, use an Arkansas style call. Um, not to say that it's necessarily better or, or worse or anything like that. That's just what I choose to use. Um, you can get either an Arkansas or a Louisiana style call in a single or double read. Um, and so, but for today's video, um, I'm going to show you guys kind of how to hold the call properly, how to blow some, you know, certain notes into the call. And uh, I'm going to be doing it with a single reed call right here. I've got, this is an echo timber call. And, uh, and so the first thing we need to do is let's talk about, uh, you know, the proper way that we, that we hold the call and then we, in our hand and also putting it to our mouth. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your hand like this. You're going to take your call and set it right up in there. And then you're going to be able to kind of close your hand over the end of the call. Now we're not going to be that concerned right now with showing you how to, you know, kind of throw your sound. Uh, it's mainly just going to be kind of let's get a let's get a sound out of the call. So we're going to hold the call like this, and then you're going to put the call to your mouth, just like you were going to be drinking, you know, a bottle of Coke or water or for me Mountain Dew. Uh, you're going to put the call just like this, and you can see. It covers over your top lip and it kind of goes inside your mouth just a little bit, just like you'd drink a bottle. Okay? And then, then you, then you can blow it. So what we're doing is we're calling from our gut or from our diaphragm, okay? I like to think of a duck call as if it was a musical instrument. If you've ever blown a wind instrument like a trumpet or a saxophone or, or something like that, you have a lot of pressure. What you're doing is you're controlling your air that's coming out of your diaphragm and through the call. And so you don't want to just huff. You know, you're not doing that. You're not gonna puff your cheeks you're gonna have a lot of serious pressure and control of that wind. What you want is you want forced air, just like if you were gonna you know, blow a musical instrument. Uh, and so, again, using that analogy, um, you know, musicians hold their mouth a certain way. They call that their embouchure. And so, you know, it's very, very deliberate the way that they hold it, you know, because they've got a lot of pressure of that wind coming out of their mouth. I'm gonna show you by turning the call around backwards. It's a lot of pressure. It's a lot of wind coming through that call. And it sounds like, well, gosh, that's a lot, a lot, a lot of wind. And it, and it really is. And as you learn how to blow and you have more experience, you'll learn how to control your air with pressure to be able to make your call sound louder or softer. 
with all that out of the way, let's, let's talk about how are we going to make a quack. The quack is the most basic sound that a duck makes, and it's going to be the most important sound that you make as a duck caller. I get a lot of guys ask me the question, what do you say when you're making, making a sound on your call? I don't know that I really do. I know a lot of guys teach, you know, quit or dwit. Um, I, I guess maybe my sound maybe is, is more close to dwit. Um, than anything else, um, but here's what it sounds like from the back end of the call. That's a quack sound that I'm making, and here's what it sounds like now as I'm making it through the call with the reed and everything. Okay, and so it's very controlled. I can make it loud, I can make it soft. A lot of guys like to call with a grunt and uh, it makes it sound raspier and deeper. But what happens with a lot of guys is they wind up you know, developing a bad habit of having too much grunt in their calls and it's really, really difficult for them to get out of doing it. So I really don't teach uh, grunting into a call. Um, there's just a little bit of a huff maybe at the very beginning of a note that you can almost hear a hint of a sound when I call, but that's all you want because otherwise, you just don't want that. I just think that's bad form to call that way. You really want to just force your air and just sound. You can almost hear, like I said, a hint of a at the beginning of a sound that I make, but there's it's just such a hint of it, you really don't even hear it. You definitely want to cut your note off with a good hard ending. Uh, you do that by, you know, using your tongue and maybe using a T or a K sounding uh, word. Just keep blowing single quacks over and over again until you get the hang of it. Be patient. It may not come right away. If it doesn't sound perfect, that's okay. Just keep practicing and keep trying, and eventually you'll get the hang of it. Now, after you've gotten that part figured out, now we're going to start using our hand and closing down on the call at the beginning of the note and then as you blow through the note, you're going to open your hand up and it's almost like you're throwing it, okay? If you can master the sound of a quack, it's going to be way easier for you to learn how to make all of the other sounds that you need to be able to make you know, when you're duck calling. Also in holding your call a, a certain way, what I like to do is make sure that when I'm holding the call, the tone board is like this. It's oriented this direction when I put it to my mouth, like that, okay? So when it's inside the barrel, it's like that, right? Now, this is a personal preference to me. This is not something that you must do. It definitely makes a difference in your sound of your calling. Um, but, you know, you need to do what works for you, and then I suggest, you know, pick the direction that you use it and always call that way. Once you figure out what you think sounds best to you, always call that way. Um, I know that there are a few call makers that they teach this technique as well, but the reason a lot of them say they like to do it that way is just because they don't, their call doesn't stick as much because the spit that comes out of your mouth when you call, um, it tends to kind of go through the call a little bit better when the reed is on the bottom. I just think it sounds a little bit better. I feel like I've got a little bit more control of the call when I, when I have it this way. It seems like I get more questions from people about how to do a feed call. Uh, whether it's guys in my blind hunting with me or even, you know, questions from viewers on some of these videos, they, they ask me about the feeding call. And I've done some other videos talking about that, but I'm going to show you how I do it. Uh, a feed call is really just some clucks uh, kind of, you know, run together. Um, and I do more 
of single note kind of cluck type feeding calls than I do, you know, kind of the machine gun sounding call. I don't think it sounds that that realistic. Um, and I feel like it's more effective to do it the way I do it. So I'm going to show you. Um, basically, what I'm doing is I'm I'm saying like maybe the word tick or cut or cuck or tuck. Okay, you can try those words. And I kind of interchange them up a little bit. If I want to kind of roll the call a little bit, sometimes I'll, I'll do some single notes and then I'll kind of do a little bit of fast calling and then back to some single notes. So how am I making those fast notes? Um, I'm kind of going tukka tukka, tikka tikka, tukka tukka. That, that sort of thing is kind of how I get into doing that. And I also like to throw in a lot of quacks while I'm doing some feed calling. And so that's what you're going to hear me do when I, uh, when I demonstrate for you. So let me show you a little bit of feed calls. <laughs> If you have multiple guys calling at the same time, it sounds like a roar of feed calling when you have two or three guys that are really, really good at it, but it, it sounds like real ducks, you know, and it doesn't sound like that machine gun approach. Once you get the simple feed call worked out, you know, try changing it up a little bit. This is a little variance that I like to use. In the description part of this video, I've left some markers where you can kind of find the different parts of where I'm showing you how I call a certain way. And so what you can do is you can quickly go back to those spots. And if you want to play along with it, you know, blow your call along with me, um, you know, you can do that as well. Like I said, this is the very basics of duck calling, learning how to do a quack, learning how to do some clucks and some feed calls. That's going to be the most important basis for your duck calling adventure. I'll have a few more videos about calling specifically on cadences and some advanced things that you'll uh, want to learn how to do. They'll be coming out in the weeks ahead. Uh, if you've got any questions about calling, make sure you leave them in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, you can check out some of my other calling videos right here so make sure you check that out and I got another great video right here make sure you check that one out too until next time I'm Joel Strickland good hunting and God bless